Hi, Douglas Simonson here coming to you from Mexico with another time-lapse video where I create a painting from start to finish. Today I'm going to be working from a photograph I shot of Steve Chen at Malibu a few years ago. And by the way, if you like Steve and you want to see more of him, check out the Steve ebook on my website at douglassimonson.com in the ebooks gallery. Okay, this is the photo that I'm going to be using today. And this is the tweaked version. If you've watched my videos before, you probably know that I always tweak the photo in Photoshop to make it easier to work from. And in fact, you can check out my video on this channel using Photoshop to make paintings easier to paint from. So, great composition here, but even tweaked, this photo lacks color excitement. So one of my goals when I started this painting was to inject some color. So now I'm about to start painting. What's going on here is I've used pencil to sketch in the image very roughly on the canvas. Usually I cover the whole canvas with a brown or purple wash, but I'm using a different approach today. Lately, I've been getting good results with an almost dry brush effect, using less paint than usual and scrubbing the brush across the surface of the canvas. It's worked well in some test runs, so I'm going to try it now on an actual painting. I'm starting at the top with the distant land mass, then blocking in the water, using some bright colors just to see how that works. This is rough and experimental. I'll keep what seems to work and try other things for the stuff that doesn't work, making things up as I go along, but still always checking the reference photo. Notice that even though I'm changing the colors from what we see in the photo, I'm doing my best to keep the values the same. In other words, the ocean is darkest at the horizon and my ocean, even with different colors, will still be darkest at the horizon. I'll also do my best to replicate the lights and darks you see in the shore break. As long as the values, the lights and darks, are correct, you can do anything you want with color. I'm blocking in just the darks on the figure just to get them in and see how they look against the background. Not too light, not too dark. Then I use some raw sienna and white to start blocking in the sandy areas. Again, the colors don't have to be exactly right as long as the lights and darks are. Now I'm continuing with the background, adding blue for sky. And then I'm going to put more detail into the foreground where the sand is showing through the water. Notice how I'm working all over the painting rather than staying in one area for long. That keeps the whole painting at more or less the same level of finish, and it's easier to fix problems as they arise. Now that the background is more established, I go back to the figure and add some lighter flesh tones to the left side where the light is hitting Steve's backside and shoulders. With that done, I move on to the ocean and do some more experimenting with colors. I really am just trying stuff here, letting the source photo and my intuition guide me. When a color area works, I leave it, and when it doesn't, I try something else. And like I said earlier, I'm paying attention to the values, the lights and darks, because that's what's going to make things look like what they're supposed to look like. I really can't overemphasize how important it is to get the lights and darks right. It really isn't about the color. It's about how dark or how light the colors are. And what that means is you have to pay a lot of attention to your source photo because that's what tells you where to put the lights and where to put the darks. Okay, the ocean is looking pretty good, so I add some more detail to the landmass in the distance. What's going on here is I am referring to my photo a lot trying to put in natural looking patterns of light and dark. The trick is to make things look random and not too repetitive because things are not evenly spaced in nature. And I like how this part is looking. It's looking pretty natural. I'm also softening things a bit around Steve's head so that he stands out a bit more against the background. Next, I do a bit more work on the ocean, continuing to refine the lights and darks of the water. The painting is now sufficiently developed for me to start adding a bit more detail in the waves. But that doesn't mean I'm getting picky and careful. I'm still using a big brush 
and in putting these so-called details in quickly and letting them stay imperfect. Now I go back to the figure. What I'm doing here is putting in the darkest darks, where the shadows are the deepest, but I'm also refining the edges of the figure. This is an important skill. I'm paying attention to the edges because having the edges right can really help add a feeling of depth to your paintings. Some parts of the figure are going to have sharp edges. In some areas, the edges are very soft. This is a skill that takes a while to develop, but it can really make a difference in your paintings. Next, I add some highlights to define where the sun is hitting the shoulders and the upper back. Putting in highlights is always the fun part. It just brings the whole thing to life. With the figure looking pretty good, I turn my attention back to the waves in the background. Again, trying stuff. As I said, this is more about the lights and darks, the values, than it is about the colors. The placement and degree of lights and darks is what's going to make the figure stand out against the background while still making the background look like what it's supposed to look like, which is a series of waves receding into the distance. It's also about making the background interesting, but not so interesting that it detracts from the figure. I know I said I was just trying stuff here, but keep in mind that all my experimentation is within the context of the source image, the reference. I am always referring to the photograph to see how I'm doing, in terms of replicating the values and the patterns because that's how I get the effects of water and sand and foreground and background, etc. The painting is coming together pretty well so I can now start getting a little fussy with details like adding that little strip of light where the land and water meet. These little details are important but it's also important to keep the details to a minimum you want to choose the right details so that you can suggest detail while still keeping most of the painting pretty rough. Your painting will have a lot more life and vitality if you keep the details to a minimum. We're now in the finishing stages of the painting where I'm just going through and looking for places where the painting still doesn't match the photo and fixing them. At the same time, I'm squinting and checking the overall composition and looking for things that don't quite feel right yet. I'm going for the final balance. This is hard to define. And even though I did this painting in one day, I usually don't finish it in one day. I find it's a good idea to sleep on it and then look at it with fresh eyes the next day and then go in for the final touches that bring the whole thing into balance. I said I finished this painting in one day, but actually the next day I saw one thing that I thought could use some improvement, the atmospheric perspective. This is a term that means you can make the distant landmass look a little more distant by softening it. And I do that by putting a subtle wash of white paint over it. Now it looks just a little bit more distant, a little softer, the values are softened, and the figure pops out just a bit more and we're finished. And that's the final painting. I call this Steve at Malibu and you can see it now on my website at douglassimonson.com. I hope you found this video entertaining and maybe learned something. And if you uh, like the video and you want to see more, please like and subscribe. I'm always making new paintings which means I'm always making new videos. So if you did get a little inspired, please get out your paintbrushes and your paints and put on your painting clothes and go paint! <laughs>